Hey, what's up everybody? And welcome to the video. I am the Tattooed Preacher. And in this video, I wanna talk about something that affects everybody. You know, there isn't one person in the whole world who is not affected by this one thing. And that thing, it's fear. You see, fear is so unique to me because there are so many different things that people are afraid of. And in the midst of all of those things, there's a spectrum of like being affected on a very low scale all the way up to being like super massively crazy afraid. And every single person has different capacities and how they handle that fear and how they process that fear. And so there's things that you're afraid of that I'm not afraid of, things that I'm afraid of that you're not afraid of. And then there's things that we're both afraid of, but we both handle that same fear in a different way. Fear, I think, is very unique to each person and how everyone kind of handles that and processes that, but fear in general affects everyone. So the question is then, like, how do you handle or process fear? And because the reality is you can go on Google and type in how do you deal with fear and you'll get like millions of hits from like books and articles and journals and blogs. Everyone and their grandmother has given their thoughts and opinions on fear and how to handle and process that. And so I don't want to reinvent the wheel, but I just thought I would just share a couple of key Bible verses and biblical truth that have helped me and that I think have a way of helping anyone no matter what your specific fear or fears are. And so I just want to take a few moments just to kind of share those truths that have helped me. Now, before we get to what the Bible has to say about fear, I just want to quickly break up fear into four categories. Now, you could Google it again and find 10,000 different lists of how fear is broken up into, but these four kind of categories have kind of helped me personally process fear in the different areas in my life, and so I thought that I would share them with you. And so the first category of fear is the fear of failure. And very quickly, this could be things from, you know, not starting a business. This could be not trying out for some kind of sports team. This could be not completing school. I mean, this is just any area or activity in your life where you just have not taken that risk and done it or completed that task because you just simply thought that it wasn't going to work out. So you didn't even try, right? So that's fear of failure and everything associated with that. The second is the fear of man or fear of people. And this is things like, you know, fear of being rejected by people, you know, fear of people hurting you, fear of being in a relationship because you think that that person is, is once they get to know the real you, they're not going to want you. And so they're going to leave you, right? This is fear of not actually letting yourself be known because you think people are going to judge you, look down on you, criticize you, whatever, right? So this is fear of man, fear of people, and everything associated with that. Third category is fear of the unknown. Things like fear of dying, fear of death. This could be fear of government and politics. Basically things that you can't control. And then lastly, anything to do with the fear of the supernatural realm or the spirit realm. And this could be things like having, you know, nightmares and demonic encounters, having these negative, terrifying experiences with the unseen or spiritual world and everything associated with that. These four areas, these four categories kind of break up all the different kind of fears that I've struggled with in my life and, and have kind of helped me, you know, categorize them and process them and kind of help me walk through the steps to deal with them. So what does the Bible have to say about fear? Now, it's interesting to note that one of the most common subjects that God addresses in the entire Bible is the subject of fear. In fact, there are hundreds of verses from Genesis all the way to Revelation that deals with the subject of fear, where God over and over and over again tells his people to not to be afraid, you know, do not fear in different situations and circumstances over and over and over again. There are three verses that highlight three truths that I feel like can be applied to any fearful situation that you may have. The first verse I want to bring to your attention is 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. For God gave us a spirit 
not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Now, what's interesting about this verse is where it says that God, he didn't give us a spirit of fear. Everyone is naturally afraid about something. But then there's also a point when that fear kind of get to a point where it begins to control you, right? It begins to cause you to freeze. It begins to stiffen you. It, it, it begins to grip you in a certain way that it, it begins to affect the way you live. And so I think that the first thing you have to figure out when you're dealing with your fear and wanting to, you know, get over that fear and, and, and process and, and move past it is figuring out, is this just kind of a, a natural fear or has it crossed over into this kind of situation where it becomes spiritual? If it has crossed over, then God's got to break that hold. At the end of this video, I want to pray for those of you who feel like there are fears in your life where it's not just natural fear, but it's crossed over to become some kind of a, a stronghold in your life and it's crippling you and causing you and really affecting the way you live your life. So that's the first thing we have to figure out. But once you figure that out and you've dealt with it, then the second verse I want to look at is Psalm 23 verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, some translations say, valley of deep darkness. I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I love this verse so much. It's, it's one of my most favorite verses because it really communicates a really important truth. Everyone's valley of shadow of death is different, right? We all have different fears and we're all affected differently by our fears. And so we can't really compare, you know, someone's fear to another person's fear. But what we see in this verse is that no matter what your valley of shadow of death is, God is with you. We have to understand when we're dealing with fear, the reality of God's presence is huge. When you truly understand that God is with you, that it's not just some kind of intellectual thought that we just know to be true, because we know that, you know, God is everywhere. He's omnipresent, but that his tangible presence his, his manifest presence is always with you. If you really understood that, had a revelation of that and believed that, that would dramatically affect your fear levels. You know, if you were walking down an alleyway and it's middle of the night, these two big dudes approach you, but you had Jesus walking beside you and you physically saw Jesus there, I guarantee you, you wouldn't be afraid of those guys. Why? Because you know who's with you. God's presence is so real and so powerful. And that's why it's so important for us to know that no matter what situation you're in, no matter how fearful it is, he's with you. He's with you in the valley of the shadow of death. And David understood that. And that's why he can pen these words. And even though he was in the most fearful situation, the darkest time of his life, because God was with him, he knew that God was going to get him through. So that's the second thing. And the third verse I want to look at is Psalm 34, verse 4. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. And so it's one thing to know that God's with you. David says, or the psalmist says, he says, I sought the Lord. It's another thing to know that you're with God. You see, we have a role to play in our relationship with God. I pursued him. I seeked out God. I brought God my fears. I brought God my worry. I brought God all my anxiety. I gave my situation to God. And that's a very powerful action to do. When you begin to give and release and bring to the Lord your fears. When you begin to understand that yet that he's with you, but that you are also with him. And the verse says that when he sought the Lord, the Lord answered him and he delivered me from all my fear. God delivering you from your fears doesn't necessarily mean that the situation may change, but what's going to change is your fear of the situation. So we need to understand that yes, God's presence is with us, but that we're actually with him as well, and that we need to bring our fears, bring our worries, and bring all our cares to him. And when we do that, I guarantee you that will lower the fear levels in your life. So again, those are the three ways, the three, three verses, three truths that I think can be applied to any and every fear that you may have, right? The first thing you gotta understand, is it a natural fear? 
or has it crossed that line into becoming kind of a spiritual stronghold of fear in your life that needs to be broken? And the second thing is understanding that God is with you. His presence is with you. And because he's with you, you do not have to be afraid. And then the third thing is understanding that not only is his presence with you, but that you're with him. And to seek him out and to bring before him, to give him all of your worries and anxieties and fears. Because we have a part to play as well in our relationship with God. If you find yourself in that kind of first category, there's things in your life, fears in your life that you know are crippling you that are preventing you from actually living out your life. And it's crossed that line into becoming a spiritual stronghold. And so I feel like the Lord wanted me to pray for you. And so we're gonna pray that the Lord kind of breaks those in your life right now, no matter when you're watching this, because God can do that. So Jesus, I come to you right now and you see every person watching this and you know all the fears that are represented all the fears, God, fear of failure, fear of the unknown, fear of, fear of man, fear of people, fear of relationships, fear of allowing yourself to be known, fear of rejection, all the different fears, God, that are crippling people, that are preventing them from actually living out the lives that you've called them to live. And so Jesus, in the authority of, of your word right now, I break those strongholds of fear in their life, Jesus, in your name. Holy Spirit, I ask right now that you would invade right now each person. Surround them with your presence right now, Lord. And by your power, by your mighty arm, break those fearful strongholds. The hole that fear has in each one of them, God, will be broken right now, Jesus, in your name. I pray for freedom right now to flow through every person watching that struggles with crippling fear. Fear is not of you. You haven't given a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. So I speak your word right now into each situation. Fear has to leave in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, for what you're going to do. I ask all these things, Jesus, in your beautiful name. Amen. Well, I hope that that prayer ministered to you. Please let me know either in the comment section below or in an email, um, what God did for you. Well, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it was a blessing to you and encouragement to you. As always, feel free to like this video, share it and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, you can check out my Instagram and uh, TikTok. I am posting daily on there the, at the handle, uh, the tattooed preacher. So check me out there. Thanks so much for watching again. Much love and God bless.